PepsiCo. Ticker symbol PEP is an American multinational food and beverage company. They own most of the iconic beverages like Pepsi, Doritos, Gatorade and Mountain Dew. Loved by people all over the world. With dividends being increased year over year over the last 50 years. Making PepsiCo a dividend king. This along with the capital appreciation over the past decades makes PepsiCo not only beloved by consumers but also by investors, especially dividend investors. In this video we'll go over the annual report of PepsiCo, look at some key financial metrics and use the best valuation models in order to come up with the share price to see if it's the right time to buy. Let's grab the latest annual report and look at the key information and statistics. PepsiCo is organized into seven business segments, being Frito-Lay North America, Quaker Foods North America, PepsiCo Beverages North America, Latin America, Europe, Africa, Middle East and South Asia, and Asia Pacific, Australia and New Zealand and China region. 58% of the revenue comes from food where 42% come from beverages. 57% from that revenue comes from the US and 43% from outside the US. The largest businesses are Frito-Lay North America, consisting 27% of total revenue, and PepsiCo Beverages North America, 30% of total revenue. So what about PepsiCo that makes it so special? Well, it's all about branding. Unless you've been living under a rock, you must have bought one of these brands from PepsiCo, like Cheetos, Captain Crunch, Mountain Dew, Pepsi, Starbucks at home beverages, Lays and so much more. PepsiCo is very focused on what is called product innovation. Customers going to supermarkets see these brands all over the place, getting recognized all over the world. Customers going to the supermarket buy brands like Pepsi rather than some store brand product. This is called having a moat around your company, a concept made popular by Warren Buffett himself. This is very important knowing when valuating companies. So what about the dividends and its growth rate? After all, as dividend investors, we're really interested in the dividends we receive from our investments. The starting dividend yield is at around the 3% mark with a dividend growth rate of 10%. Later on in one of the valuation models we will use to calculate the stock price of PepsiCo, we'll go over the sustainability of these dividends. Another way a company can pay its investors is through share repurchases. PepsiCo uses billions of dollars in order to buy back shares, although this has slowed down significantly over the last few years. Before we continue on to the valuation models, could you hit the like and subscribe button? I'm trying to hit a million subscribers before the end of 2024. <laughs> you serious? Yeah. So like always, we start off with the discounted cash flow model. This method predicts the future free cash flows and calculates the present value giving us the stock price. By plugging in the historical free cash flow and using a growth rate and discount rate of both 8%, we can calculate the present value of the future free cash flows. By adding the cash and cash equivalents and subtracting the total debt, we come to a price per share of $114.23. Not only do I want to know about the future of the cash flows, I want to know if the dividends paid out are sustainable. We need to put the dividends per share next to the free cash flow per share and see how these two relate. Because remember, dividends are paid out of free cash flow. Combining the two, we can see that the free cash flow and dividends are very close to each other, making the free cash flow payout ratio pretty high. From 50% in 2014, all the way up to above 100%, 106% in 2022. This gives little to no room for using cash for other things, like reinvest it back into the business or buy back shares, which we saw earlier in the video slow down significantly over the last few years. Next up is the dividend discount model. This model uses future dividend payments discounted back to its present value in order to determine the value of a company. We plug in the historical dividend payouts, giving us an average growth rate of 6.43%. Using a discount rate of 8% and a growth rate of 5%, which I think will be sustainable for the long term future, we can calculate the stock price, giving us a price of a share of $177.10. The third valuation model we will use is the multiples valuation model 
which assumes that similar companies should be valued the same. Companies that are similar are Coca-Cola and Monster. Plugging in their stock price and EPS gives us a PE multiples, price to earnings multiples. We use this average and also the earnings per share of PepsiCo in order to calculate the stock price, coming to $188.93. I don't just want to evaluate PepsiCo using other companies, but also compare PepsiCo itself to its history. So let's take it a step further. I want to know how the PE ratio has been doing over the past decade. The thought behind the PE is as follows. The PE tells an investor how much he's willing to pay for every dollar of earnings of the company. So with a PE of 26.31, in 2024, an investor is willing to pay $26.31 for every dollar PepsiCo earns. So the lower the PE, the better. After having calculated the intrinsic value using numerous valuation models, we come to a stock price of $160.09. This is below the current market price of $171.41. Also, when we make use of the margin of safety suggested by Benjamin Graham, the mentor of Warren Buffett, the acceptable buying price drops even further. With a margin of 10%, the acceptable buy price would be $144. So there you go, a quick valuation of PepsiCo. Before you decide to buy it or not, please do your own research and let me know down in the comments what you think of the stock. If you made it this far into the video, please consider subscribing to the channel. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.